Marketing departments have become very clever at dodgery and telling half-truths, even at making up impressive sounding but meaningless jargon to sell what is often nothing more than snake oil. A hobby's aquarium is a singularly inappropriate beta test site for products a manufacturer has not fully or indeed themselves. Our aquariums are not the proving grounds for new products that may have teething problems. It now borders a hobbyist on the behavior nearer to that of a test consultant than aquarium hobbyist. We consistently define and the responsibilities of a manufacturer of aquarium products first to be able to make a worthy product, second to be able to make it consistently and reliably. Each is as important as the other is, and both are relevant to the consumer, not just the first. We hobbyists like to believe it is all about the aquatic animal's health, their safety, and well-being. But when manufacturers become inebriated with cupidity and lie their way into our pocketbooks, it is then obvious that it is really all about the Benjamins. Innovation has been the growth engine of this hobby from the very beginning on both the aquatic animals and the hardware sides. However, history has taught us that big firms, if left to their own devices, can also stifle innovation. It is like a moment of creation at one end of the line and a perversion of intent at the other. It is really too bad that there is not a consumer reports that hobbyists can read and use as a guideline about products that are being made and sold for this particular pastime. Unfortunately, there is not. I know the innovation are indignation and bismusement hobbyists must feel over the whole thing. But learning the truth about the better mousetrap will never really become a reality. Christmas time is coming so close and people are thinking of uh, gifts and things like that. I thought I'd go over uh, some of my reviews that I did. Now, when I do a review, I try to be as honest as possible. A lot of products that I have reviewed, such as, let's say, this... Uh, Hager heater right here, for example, I bought myself. So I have skin in the game when I buy a product. Uh, I bought it. Uh, I gave an honest review about it. The only thing I really didn't like about it was the orange color on it. Other than that, it has worked flawlessly. Uh, I tried it out. It has a very, very unique controller to control it. <clears throat> And uh, it was not sent to me, and I gave an honest review of what I think about it, how accurate it is, how neat it is for the hobbyists. And in case someone's ever thinking of a heater, if you don't mind the orange, which I wish they uh, hadn't put the orange on, um, it had some designs. As an engineer, I looked at, like, you put the, a probe. In, instead of having a separate probe, they put the probe at the very bottom of the heating element. So when the heat rises, it doesn't affect the probe. Very smart idea. When uh, I just did a review, which you probably already watched about this uh, Hager Aquarium uh, Wave Maker right here. And I told the truth, it was sent to me. In order to review a product like this, I sent it through its paces. I put it in a fish tank. I put it in the, the reservoir that I use to fill up my tank to watch the wave making capabilities of it. Does it perform the way it is? How difficult is the product to work? Uh, the only thing I had was the instructions could be made a lot easier. I could probably rewrite those instructions so anyone could understand them. And words like I said, a uh, gear or something. Uh, gear, you know, what? There's no gears, you know, it it's, it's, hasn't been written quite correctly to me. But if that's the biggest downfall I can find of the particular pump, that's really not much of a downfall because the pump performed exactly the way it was supposed to perform. It was quiet. It's easy to take apart. 
clean. So if you have fresh water or salt water, uh, the manufacturer does try to cover some things on it of, uh, you know, putting a screen on it to help protect from small fish, debris getting in there. <clears throat> the only thing of it is, like this pump, for example, it's just way, way too powerful. It's pumping 3,400 gallons an hour. That's a lot for the tanks I have. I would have to get a smaller one, and I would highly recommend it because it's quiet. It does what it's supposed to do, and uh, it has a feeding cycle for you. But even though it was given to me, you know, I always give a honest review, and then I talk to the manufacturer's rep, and, you know, if they decide we're not going to send this guy any more equipment, okay, well, whatever, you know, I... I'm not here to appease the manufacturer. I'm here to let you know honestly uh, about the products. But apparently, I realized I bought in a lot of their products with my own money just because I find them to be at the price point I want to pay and I find them to be decent products for what they are at that price point. Now, I watched a video, uh, OCD Mikey. Uh, hi-fi guy and I, as everyone knows I'm an audiophile been an audiophile ever since I was in high school and uh, I've been around the block quite a few times going to shows and everything else so audiophile but he brought up about manufacturers getting free equipment and how uh, they need the equipment for advertisement so they're going to be biased. In fact, I even saw one audio file uh, make mention that writes for stereo file, for example. I don't give bad reviews. Well, right off the bat, it's like, I don't want to listen to you. You know, not everything is perfect. Not everything's going to be perfect. But he doesn't give bad reviews. Why? Because you're on YouTube and you want free stuff. And I'm going to give you an example of... Like you take this, this Kessel Light. I saw a lot of reviews on it. This is the Tuna Sun 160. And um, I was trying to, for, for the price it cost, uh, I thought it was pretty garbagey. But then I wasn't given that for free. And even if I was given it for free, I would have probably contacted the manufacturer and told them, I cannot do a review on this product because it is garbage. It is 100% garbage. And if I hurt people's feelings, I don't really care. Because you got to be told the truth. This is garbage. This is expensive, outrageous garbage. And the only reason it got high reviews is because you handed it out free to shop owners and people that had businesses that aren't about to tell you the truth that it's not very bright. It won't even illuminate my uh, antique aquarium, and it's being illuminated by a GE bright light that illuminates the entire aquarium. Now, whenever we turn around and we check a product out, like I said when I did the review on it, um, you have to make sure it's bright enough for the human eye. If it doesn't look right to the human eye, it's no good for the aquarium. I don't care if we'll grow plants at 20 times the rate if it looks terrible to the human eye because that's what we have to contend with, whatever the human eye sees in our aquarium. Now, you take a stupid little light like this, this Alter Bright, which costs 25 bucks at Lowe's, and... I showed you how I modified it, and that's the light you see on that aquarium. It's nice, bright, white light, and it grows plants. So where is the manufacturer coming up with this garbage that's dim? No matter how you try to tune it, you're either going to get uh, blue or you're going to get this yellowish-green look, and it's not bright enough to even illuminate the antique aquarium. One light is it. What? For this price, I can't illuminate a 20-gallon aquarium at this price for one of these? You have to be joking me. But 
everybody that reviewed it said, oh, it's great, it's wonderful, it's super bright. I'm sorry, it doesn't have the luminous output as one of these. It's not as bright because that's how we perceive it by the human eye. Now that manufacturer could say, well, we're doing it for the plants. I'm sorry, I paid big money for this. I expect it to look good to my human eye also. You have to meet the plants and you have to meet what I see and what cosmetically looks nice inside my aquarium. Nice, bright, white light that promotes the growth of plants and hinders the growth of algae. I just did a uh, experiment, in fact, and I'll get into that uh, little experiment I did with different lights. And the experiment I did is I tried one of these lights right here. Well, I tried two of them because I put them over the antique aquarium in a double socket, and you probably see some of my videos with it, and I was experimenting with this light right here. Now, this is for plant growth, terrestrial plants, though. But it has a lot of red. You can see where the spectrum is. It has more red. Well, the results using this light, they were disastrous. Uh, for us freshwater hobbyists, one thing we don't want is blue in the spectrum, and you don't want red in the spectrum. It caused green, real, real bright green algae. Okay, and it's like, wow. And though the plants were okay, it turned the tank a little bit more reddish color than it did a white color. So for the eye, it didn't look appealing. So I can understand why these lamps here were on sale. I prefer just this ultra bright. I prefer it. I prefer the color. I prefer the way it looks. I prefer its brightness. It illuminates the entire aquarium where the where this one is more of a spotlight. Okay, so I tested it to see, to tell people, does it work, does it not work? Well, I wasted my money, but the point of it is it's my money, not your money, so you don't have to waste it. Don't bother buying those lights. You're at better off buying the Ultrabite, GE Ultrabite, for 25 bucks, or you can buy whatever you want. But the point I'm making is, after listening to OCD, Mikey uh, on his thing. He, he, he hit it right on the nail right on the head. He couldn't have been more perfect with the video that he did that people, when they get something from a manufacturer, they're their new best buddy. And I see a lot of videos where people are getting filters and everything. What They're salespeople. And they're getting these products because they have a high uh, viewership and they, uh, you ever notice they talk about these products, how great they are, such as this. And then I try it out and it's like, whoa, where are you coming up with this information? I don't care what anybody says. I tried it and I hate to say it, it's, it's, it's a garbage light. It's very, it's for the price. Now, if that was a $60 light, I would say it's good for a $60 light because you're going to have to buy more than one. Just for this little antique 20 gallon aquarium, you're going to have to buy more than one. But one won't even do the antique aquarium, it won't even light it up. And it should for that price point. So there's always a price point <clears throat> where you say, well, it gives and take. And of course, it doesn't mean I do a review and I don't eat crow. No. I did a review uh, on the Asta 120 lights at a price of $79 or whatever. Hey, it's a great buy. But I found out that the LEDs that they use are going out. And once they go out, the circuit's not being completed. And then your light's no good. It's out. It's gone. I've already had three of those lights go out on me. Written the manufacturer several times here, nothing from them. So I realize it's a garbage manufacturer. They don't back up their products. They don't talk to you. Once they sell it off of Amazon, it's yours. If it breaks, too bad. The only thing I use off the lights now is the arms. 
and they seem to be decent. And I use the arms to to change over my lights with to use the ultra bright. But like I said, I eat crow because it winds up being that they were a decent light for the price. But if they don't last or they don't or they burn out within a year of their warranty, and then they don't uh, manufacture and back it up, that's no good to us. So I have to eat crow and say, I would not buy it. You buy at your own risk. Understand it. Maybe it will last, and then understand maybe it will not last, those lights. I would have to say that's terrible, where uh, this GE light, you can always have a warranty, and they tell you that they, it has a warranty when if something happens and the light doesn't last so many hours, 15,000 15, hours, uh, they warranty. But GE is a big company. The Kessel here, from my understanding, they back their products up and everything else. Well, at the ridiculous price they are for what they're giving you at that price, uh, I would expect it. Okay, just like the canister filter that I have done, the F-Zone canister filter, the 15-liter canister filter, the new one that's come out. I have the old and the new style. I've been using that for over a year, the old style. Uh, the pumps I've been using well over a year to see how they work, and uh, they work just fine. I mean, what's going to go wrong with a stainless steel canister filter? What's going to break on it? Nothing except maybe the pump itself. Other than that, there's nothing going to break on that canister filter. Like I said, you buy it once and you buy it for life. Uh, almost sounds like a, you know, what is that, Moen commercial? Buy it once, buy it for life. But basically, yes, because I have a whole attic full of broken canister filters or pieces that are broken off of it, or motors that don't work any longer, or parts that I can't get, or parts that are too difficult to get. And uh, like some of these canister filters that have square um, O-rings that go on top of them, that's proprietary to the company. And if you go to order it and, oh, that's back order, well, what do I do? <laughs> You know, I don't have a canister filter. And that's happened to me. I don't have a canister filter. Oh, the the, the O-ring costs $35. Well, what? It should be a $12 O-ring, and you want $35 for a $12 O proprietary. Okay, that's how they get you. And it's back order. Well, what do I do? So you finally throw the towel and say, forget it. I'm getting another canister filter. I can't wait until you get the back order going which I have showed you with these round canister filters, you can literally go on the internet and buy a new O-ring instantly. They're nothing special. They all come in sizes that uh, re relate to how big they are making in the diameter of the canister filters, your ADAs and your uh, F-zones. ADA, now since I've had the F-zone, it's just a very overpriced, well-made filter, but it's just overpriced for what you're getting compared to the F-Zone for what you're getting for the price point. That's what I'm trying to make. So I want to make sure that everybody understands. I know some people say, it seems like you beat up on manufacturers. No, I don't beat up on manufacturers. I really don't. Uh, I expect that uh, we are not the beta testing sites for manufacturers. We are not that. We expect to get a product and we expect it to work correctly. And when it's made sloppy, our tolerances are way out on some of the products I have reviewed, if you've watched them, uh, these should never hit the market. Manufacturers know that, but they don't care. They're going to see if they can sell as many as they can to recoup everything. We are not their R&D department. We as consumers, we want good products that last. We want to pay our money for something that we can be proud of and it will last. There are some products we know will only last so long. Let's say uh, like uh, your dirt magnet. 
otherwise known as sponge filters. They got a shelf life of what, maybe five years, but you understand that. You buy the product, you understand the foam's only going to last you so long before it needs to be rebought. We understand it, but we do expect canister filters to last a long time. Hang on the back filters should last a long time. They shouldn't have a lot of problems, and we want to spend our money wisely because a lot of us don't have money. Uh, another thing is when I do a review, you can take it to the bank that I reviewed it. Now, some people said, like uh, the auto top-off, the Hager auto top-off, oh, I like to see what it's doing in a year or two from now. I would too, but I can't give you a review like that because if I get a product, it would take me so long, years, to bring it out to you, um, the product could be obsolete. They could have renewed the product that I'm giving you an obsolete review. So I have to give you a review on what I see at the time. And then as I'm using it, I can always give you, which I have done, an update of that particular product and say, if anything's happened to it, if I find something not to be quite right with it, that's the best I can do. But I try to be as honest as I can. But so this holiday season, you're gonna go out, you're gonna think about buying, products out there. Uh, if you watch my reviews and you watch what I've talked about, it lists, some things aren't very expensive, like LG scrapers that are stainless steel. LG, great LG scraper, really. It's all made out of stainless steel. No more break in plastic. I mean, when I give a good review, it's because I honestly look at it as an engineer and say, this was done right. It's not perfect, but it was done right. And you should be very happy with the product you buy. If it breaks in the interim that you own it, I don't know that because all products can break. Even cars, automobiles can break. But I just wanted to bring that up that uh, if you go back in my archives and start watching my reviews, I try to give a very honest, straightforward review. And I know I, I've said that several times. I really do. And I can care less if a manufacturer doesn't want to send me a free product anymore because I didn't think it was good enough. I can care less. I'm not trying to make a living off of this. I buy products that I feel are going to last. And if they want to send me a product like Hager did with this, I will give it an honest review. And the tech that said, sends me this, she sends me this stuff, she, I think she knows that. She, they're not going to come up. Even on this product, there's more to this, uh, the controller, that I didn't even talk about because there's so much more stuff you can do or it has the ability to do. Uh, you know, I can't make a, that long of a video. So all the accessories we buy, okay, some of it's good, some of it's not too good. Depends on the price point of what you're looking at the product at. Uh, some products are very overly priced. They better be damn good for that price. So if you watch my old videos on some of the products I have reviewed, you're going to get an honest review. You're not going to get, I was given it free and therefore I have an obligation to the manufacturer. No, I was given it free. I'm going to give you an honest review. So watch some of my archives if you're looking for some products. I've done a lot of different products of uh, LG scrapers and uh, lighting systems and uh, different things that are out there that I felt that were good and some I really felt were very, very garbagey and not worth even buying. So until next time, this is Dr. Novak. Happy fish keeping.